Hey, hey, everybody. This is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me, Crafty Scrapper, here on YouTube and Instagram. I wanted to show you a couple of things I was working on today. Um, well, one thing, really, I was working on today that I am getting together and adding to a uh, journal I'm working on right now. And you know me, when I start to make something, even if you've already seen it on YouTube in other videos, I'm going to show you what I'm making just because, you know, I'm going to video what I'm making. Um, I wanted to do some um, little label uh, dangles. And these are just little scrap pieces of paper. And I mean, I really think that's what junk journaling should be about is... Uh, a bunch of scraps other than your cover and you know maybe your page sheets you should be working with scraps because that's what a junk journal is but now of course if anybody wants to work with new stuff please don't get offended um you can use whatever products you want but these are just little scrap pieces i had in my scrap bowl over here and i punched out some pieces and then put on just a little piece of lace and maybe a little tag or something from a digital but i printed these out on my um from my ipad i've got my washing machine going so i apologize if you hear it kick on and off um i printed these little labels off from my ipad just on the um like pages documents i'll try to get it where the light's not glaring on you and you're not seeing my ugly mug in there either um what I did was on my iPad, I went to, and sorry, when I show my iPad, it makes everything else out here yellow. Um, I go to the pages. Um, let me go back to here. Go to, let's say, uh, pages there. And then I just start a blank piece of paper um, or a blank document. And what I did was I started um, typing out, and we are in the Courier New font. And then we are at 18 point font. Now you can make these smaller, larger, whatever you would like, but I think that uh, anywhere from 14 to 18 um, font is gonna be just right for labels like this to go in your junk journals or a regular size junk journal. Of course, you could go down to eight, nine, 10 font and make them for minis, mini journals if you wanted to. So that's what I'm at, Courier New font, 18 size font, and then I type out the words and just leave a space. So I'll go back on beautiful and show you what I did here. I'm hoping all that's been seen on screen there. Okay, so I'm doing it all in lowercase. So I'm gonna go B space bar, E space bar, A space bar, U space, T space, I. Now when you space from, the, from an I, it's gonna wanna capitalize it. So you just gotta make sure that that's fixed. But you put a space in between each letter. And that's how I did these labels. Now I have like courageous, I have butterflies, I have vintage, I have all of these words typed out and then I just print it and you can get, when you're doing it at 18 point font, you can get 11 words on one page. Um, then you could even cut off this side and if your printer will accept it, you can print a half sheet again of 11 more words. But I used beautiful, love always, butterflies, lovely, courageous, grateful, inspired, handwritten, vintage, limitless, and adventure. That's the 11 words that I'm using on this project. And I just wanted to show you how I um, got that. Um, little format out on the paper. Um, I actually printed these on cardstock. So 110 pound cardstock is what I um, printed these out on and just black ink. I did, did you know, just regular black. 
and let's see then on some of them like this one i left just cut them out on my trimmer and i left it wide like that i like how that is it is a little big so um it would go maybe on the spine let me show you maybe on the spine of a um, journal uh, if you have lace or you have something up here that this little bulb clip, and I'm using the Tim Holtz bulb clips, um, and we have these in the shop. They're finally off of back order. Um, if you'll just put it in through some of your lace that you have on your spine, or if you have string or um, whatever on your spine, you can put this on. And then you've got your little bulb, 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 bulb clip. <laughs> ah, and then you have a cute little dangle. You could even put some beads on your bulb clip there for right in front. That would be very cute. Um, you could do a tiny little circle. Um, I think the, yeah, five eighths that comes in that, um, nesting three pack of circle punches that we carry in the shop um the five eighths would work right there if you just um, did it a little high let's do one and show um i will on the next one that we that i make on camera but that's a way to do it um you could also clip these onto fabric or lace or whatever you have on the edges of your pages. So if you've got lace like I do here in the AJ journal, if you have lace here, you can attach the bulb clip through the lace wherever you would like and connect it there. And then you've got a little dangle there on the side of your page. You could even make it smaller if you wanted to and dangle it out that way. So you've got this coming out of the side. So if it was a lot shorter, see, and your word was a little smaller, that would be very cute. Now that is a little much to hang out the side of your journal, but um, I like it just as a dangle on the side of my page like that. That is very cute. I really like that. So that's a couple of ways that you can use them. I'm sure there are plenty of other ways, but that's the two ways I'm thinking about using mine on a journal I'm working on. And um, I'm using this um, rose colored cardstock because it goes along with the journal that I am working on. So um, let me get another piece. I've got two already for that journal. I don't know if I've got any more of that rose colored cut. Do I? Do I? Do I? Here's a little piece. I can do this. So this is just out of my, let me pull my scrap bowl over here. Some of you like to see that. Some of you don't. Some of you do. Uh, scrap bowl just of little odds and ends stuff and Thinking, I need something a little longer. So let's do this one. That and that. And a little piece of straw paper, maybe. And let's put this up. A ticket. Let's put a few different layers on this one. And then I will get a piece of lace from over here somewhere. This decorative trim. Add that to that. That's cute. All right. So here is assembly. Let's pick out what word. Let's do beautiful. All right. And then I'm going to make this long, longer than this piece. And then this one will stack. And then I think I might do a circle punched out with this, the larger circle. This is the one and a half. This is straw paper. Okay, I'm thinking, I'll cut this down, of course. Thinking here. 
and that on top of that. That goes with the little leaves that's in there. And maybe cutting this about here. I'm gonna line my beautiful up. I want this to be longer than the beautiful piece. So yeah, let's do it about here. We're not doing measuring. I mean, if you really, really wanna measure things out, go for it, but um, I'm not doing that in this project just because it is some scrap pieces that I'm just making into something useful. All right, and then I need to figure out how wide I want this. So if I do this, this, this. Okay, and then, hmm. I think I want the circle to kind of overhang on both sides, so I'll do that. Give that a trim. Find my spot first. Then give it a trim because I'm putting it up to the top so you all can see it instead of putting it, putting it, <laughs> putting it at the bottom of my trimmer so I can see it. All right, so with these two, I used my tag corner punch I think with this one, I'm going to leave it as is, but then do the tag corner punch on this little piece. So I think I might want, yeah, I want the roses shown at the bottom. I'm going to use my small angle tag punch, corner chomper, whatever. And then I'm going to ink up with vintage photo. Okay, and then I've already inked, cut out and inked my word label. Now, if you already have word labels that you've bought from a Etsy shop or something, digital word labels, you could print those on cardstock and then um, use them like this. So that's one step you wouldn't have to do. You wouldn't have to type out anything. You already have word labels somewhere. So, that would make this process even faster, but it's already quick and easy. And the little shabby chic um, dangles you get out of this is just beautiful. Okay, <laughs> beautiful. All right, I really like that. And then let's add, let me see, do I want, I think I want that flower down there. So I'll put the, bulb clip through that. That works out nicely. Um, do I want it there? Or do I want it on top of this tag and right behind the beautiful? Or do I want it on there at all? Let's see. I think that's kind of overpowering that, don't you? I think so. Um, let's go with, I might use that on something else, but well, let's look at this here. If I just did, I'm going to wad up some seam binding. If I just did a little crinkly piece, yep, I think I might like that a little bit better. It's not as overpowering as that lace trim was. All right, if I center that up and then go here, I think I want this behind that and just have it peeking out. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to put some dictionary page on this back part. So let's go ahead and get a little piece of dictionary sheet and then just cut it down to what I need 
And then I'm just gonna barely do some inking just to dirty it up a little bit and age it. Okay, and then glue this piece on. And I mean, really, that is about all the glue that you need for this project because the bulb clip is gonna hold everything else together. Now, what I do, because I don't have the tiny, tiny, tiny little hole punch. So, I am going to, first off, I'm gonna pull this seam binding up just a little bit so it's peeking out the top of that punch circle. Okay, and that's how I want it lined up. That's pretty, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna get my foam platform like I use when I am sewing in a signature for a journal. And then this is my awl. If you have the big wood handled awl, any awl works. A-W-L is what I'm talking about. All right, then you're gonna line up all of these little layers to how you want it when you put your bowl clip through. And then you're gonna just put your all through every one of the layers, get a bulb clip. And it's probably not all gonna line up for you when you're starting to put it on the bulb clip. You'll have to take it apart layer by layer to put it, <laughs> to put it on there. And then sometimes your bulb clip wants to fall out of your hand. So there is first layer, second layer, and then through some of that seam binding, then through your circle and your back layer, and then you're going to put your bulb clip all the way through to the back, and then there's your little cute word label dangle for your journals. I really like that. I like that it's all just kind of um, what some would call trash. It's like a trash to treasure word label dangle. I might even put that in the title. <laughs> Who knows? All right, so I was going to make one with um, the little circle at the top to kind of cover up all the white on that one which this one is the largest one and has the most white, so I might go ahead and punch out something, and I think if it'll work on this dictionary page. Oh, look at that, it did, good. Okay, that's what I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do for that one, is put on some dictionary page at the top of that one. And whatever scraps you have laying around, um, you could coordinate them. You could put on stuff that does not coordinate. Whatever you want to do. All right, so I'm going to get that little circle that I just punched. And I'm going to go a little high with it. As far as sticking up at the top. So I went really low on the circle so that there's more up in the bulb clip than not, okay? And then I'm gonna go back through my layers. So I've got my word label. I've got my little ticket. I've got my lace. And my tag on the back. All right, so that circle is still just a little big because it covers up the L in my love always. So I think I will make it like a half circle. <laughs> no, I will just 
mess it up completely. Let's try that one more time. Okay, I think I'll just go with a half circle punched out of the dictionary page. Once you start tearing the dictionary page, and especially when it's on a pen, it's just going to crumble on you. And now my little half circle won't hold on to my hand so I can get it on. All right, one more time. Let's do that. Take it off one more time. I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna put this through and then through that and through my ticket and through my lace and then through my tag. Oh yeah, that works. Cause you can move it over however you need to. And then you've got that white space at the top of that one covered up, but you don't have your word covered up. I love that. Okay, let's make one more. Okay, one with butterflies. So this one says butterflies. So it definitely has to have a butterfly in it. Don't you think? So I'm gonna open up my ephemera holder that I still have not filled up. And I think I'm gonna go with one of these. I like that one. Let's see if I've got any more butterflies in here. I think I'd put all my Tim Holtz butterflies in this one. Oh, yep, there's some huge ones. Okay, so that's the smallest ones I've got left. So that works. Let's do that. And I love this elastic lace to go around um, ephemera books, holders, and stuff. Um, I'm not sure where we got that, but I would really like to start carrying that in the shop. And for anybody that's wondering when I say shop, I've said this umpteen times, but I still get questions. Where's your shop? What's your shop's name? It's all in the description box below. So if you'll hit see more or the little um, down arrow, it'll expand the description box and I've got links and I've got everything in there. So scrapbookingwithme.com. I say that at the beginning of all of my videos. That is the shop I'm talking about when I talk shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm a cheese ball, I know. Um, now let's see. Hmm, <laughs> I'm looking for something that kind of goes along with it, but it does not have to match perfectly. Now, there's some that if the dangle was hanging out of the journal, you could see the rows on the back of it. So I like that. It's got some um, nice full glitter looking stuff on it. And it's almost the same size as that. So I might make um, one that's all straight and narrow. Let's look here. I've got some more that would go with that. Or if I want to just go with some ad paper. I like that. And it's kind of hanging down. I like that. So let's do, let's try to do, yep, the tear tool. I don't know if I'll be able to get it on that one side or not because it is cardstock. Let's see if I can get it done. I did it, yay. Okay, so yes, cardstock is a little harder to trim with that um, tear tool than regular paper. Most of y'all already knew that. I'm new to the whole tear tool thing. I just got mine a couple of months ago, actually. Okay, and then I'm going to ink. And if your dangle is going to hang out of the side of your journal, you might want to turn your paper over 
and ink the other side too. Okay, and then I've already got that. I think I'm gonna do it like this. And then butterfly like that. So it can kinda dangle out like this. So yeah, I'm just gonna do the one wing on the butterfly. I still think it needs something, um, of course, fabric. Let's get some fabric of some kind. Let's look, is that too much? Mm, no, I like that. So let's get about like that of that blue lace. And I think maybe hide it behind the butterfly. So it kind of, yep, that's cute. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's get them all lined up like we want them. I'm just gonna line that up together and then get the lace on there just a little higher than everything else. And then butterfly, top of the butterfly wing, and then that at the top of the butterfly too, and get my foam platform and then go through all the layers. And then I think I'll do a black um, bulb clip on this one. I'm gonna try to hold these layers together and just get them through all of them. Look at that, that was nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, I like that pretty. It's got the blues in it. It comes away from the pinks a little bit. I like that. All right, let's see. Do limitless since I've already got it cut out. Oh, on these, I wanted to also show you um, if you cut them too wide or something like that, you can always put your ruler. I'll push these up a little bit can always put your ruler on it and line it up so it is straight and then use a pencil and you can get um, okay it's straight on there so you're gonna come over this way get your pencil and kind of do your line and then get your scissors because I cannot cut a straight line for anything in the world and get your scissors and come along there if you wanted to make it you know a little more narrow um, but I also on these used my Prima distress tool and so that still needs some off the bottom, and I don't know that I'm gonna get it straight, but I'm gonna try. So I'll put it up against my ruler at the bottom here, and then, you know, push over and get a little tighter in on that, and do my pencil line. And then I'm gonna trim right inside that pencil line. Now, even having a line or a guide to go by when you are cutting, you may still get a little wonky on your lines. The way I have found to shabby chic grunge this up just a little bit more is to use the um, looks like tiny cheese grater 
side of my distress tool and go along the top and the bottom and just kind of wave up that line, top and bottom. Okay. And then I do my inking. So then you see a pretty straight line and then with a little bit of waffling in the um, distressing you just did. So that's how I did those. And see, I like the size of that grateful. Let's go ahead and use that one. So that's how I cut those up. I just cut them in with my trimmer and then went back and cut them even closer if I wanted it. Like, see how the lovely is? I cut that one very close to the actual word. So that's how I cut them up. Let's use grateful. And let's use some of this ink dyed paper, some more of my um, straw paper, scrap, and then maybe one of these, I think these are Tracy Fox labels, let's see, yes, a Tracy Fox label, and let's see, if we want to use Grateful and Let's look, see what we want to use with Grateful. Um, let's do the tree one, I like that. Okay, so I got that cut out and I um, have inked the edges and I'm gonna put that behind there and then I'm gonna leave that torn at the top, I believe. And I need it about yay wide and about yay long. So I'll trim that. And I'm thinking maybe, now I'm thinking, that I want to put the torn edge toward the bottom. And I'm just going to leave that piece of straw paper as is. Yep, and then I need a bigger element. So let's look at some ledger paper here. And get us a big circle cut out of the ledger paper. Get that back and ink that. Okay, um, I think maybe back behind this and off to the side. It doesn't all have to be layered right on top of each other. Do it however you would like. Yeah, I like it off to the side like that. Out there. And then another piece of lace of some kind. Let's look here what we got. Um, that's pretty. Yep, and let's make it about the same length as the grateful. Okay, so I'm going to ink my other two pieces that I hadn't got to yet. And then ink my dyed paper and really emphasize that torn bit on the bottom. There we go. And dirty it up quite a bit. And then I'm going to do this on top of here. I'm going to do this off to the side. And then there and there. I think I might even go up a little bit with that circle. There we go. And let's do the lace before the Tracy Fox label. OK, 
Okay, and then grateful on top of that. Oh, I like those layers. Let's get it ready for the foam platform. Let's pull that lace up just a touch more. Okay. And then throw your foam platform in the floor. So you have to work even harder. <laughs> then you're just making sure that you're through all of the layers. And I think I might use a regular gold one this time. I've been using antique everything. Let's go gold on this one. Okay, and then make sure that you're through, yep, through that circle that's off to the side since you didn't line it up just perfectly straight. And I think maybe some dictionary page or, ooh, this one, this scrap over here I've got too. I like that. Let's put a little bit of that on our blue dyed paper since it's very plain. Let's get it there. And there, let's see if that's too big for it. Nope, I like that, okay. Let's get that inked. There we go. And the only part of this project you have to glue is if you want to put some torn paper or something on one of your layers. So there is my little torn piece. Get my rag to get off the excess so it doesn't stick to anything else and you're making sure not to tear anything as you're wiping. Cute. All right, so there are my scrap word label dangles. And they come together so quickly, especially if you have your scraps already, you know, set to the side of what you want to use. And then after you get your word labels um, printed out or fussy cut out, if you're going to use a digital of some kind, then it goes really, really quickly. So I hope you have enjoyed this little project I started today that I wanted to get done for a journal that I'm uh, working on right now. And I will show that journal once I get it done. Um, I have noticed that while I'm working on a journal, um, I don't get as much interest or feedback on those. So I'm just going to start... Um, working on bits and pieces that go in journals and then well i say start i've been doing that but i'm going to more emphasize working on little bits and pieces and bits and bobs to go in journals and then i'll do the journal flip through and show you you know where um, we worked on this element or that element or that accent or that ephemera cluster, whatever we did that's in that journal, and I'll reference you back to the tutorial on those little pieces. So this is one of those little pieces. I wanted to make some word label dangles, so I wanted to share them with you. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day. God bless. Bye, y'all.